What's happening everyone, my name is Alex and welcome back to a new review. For today we have a tablet and this is one of the biggest tablets that I've seen so far, but in all fairness we have an 11.6 inches screen and a 9000mAh battery. This is the Jumper EasyPad 6 Pro, a tablet that runs Windows 10 and costs somewhere around $200. So what do we get for that money? Well, first of all, we get an IPS screen with a 1080p resolution. We get the Intel N3450 CPU. This is a quad-core CPU. We have 6 gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of internal storage, and an activated copy of Windows 10, the Home Edition. Since we have an activated copy of Windows 10, that means that you're gonna be able to get updates right from Microsoft. And I actually got a whole bunch of updates for this tablet. And you also have access to the Windows Store. And that means that you can just download apps and games from there. So the tablet this size, we have some advantages and some disadvantages. I mean, it's awesome to watch a movie on this. It's awesome to type on it because it's so big. But in the same time, it's kind of awkward to hold because it's just too big. So it's nice to do certain things with it, but it's kind of big. And I wish those bezels all around the screen would be somewhat smaller because the tablet would be a bit easier to use basically and hold. This tablet weighs 750 grams and it's mostly made out of plastic. So the back, the size, the screen, basically everything about this tablet, it's made out of plastic and it's kind of easy to scratch. So be careful where you place this down and what touches the screen because it's very, very easy to get it scratched. And I mean, after you pay like 200 bucks, you don't really want it um, all scratched up. Now on the left hand side, we have a micro USB port. We also have one of the speakers. We have the HDMI out, USB-C port, a USB 3 port, and lastly the port for the power adapter. On the other side, we have the 3.5mm audio jack. We also have a slot for an SD card, the second speaker, and all the way at the top, um, we have the power button and the volume keys. You can also get a keyboard for it and I believe that's 20 bucks more and the, that would basically attach to the bottom of the tablet and I kind of wish I'd have got a keyboard for it because it would make it look more like a notebook um, than a tablet. One thing I don't like about the tablet is the fact that you cannot charge it from the USB port. So we have a USB 3 here, we have a USB-C port, but you cannot charge it from those ports. So you always have to plug it in um, with that uh, power adapter that comes with it. And I mean, if you're traveling and you have like a power bank, you're not going to be able to charge it from a power bank. And that kind of sucks. Another thing I don't really like about the tablet are the speakers. So we have one on the left, one on the right, but they don't seem to get that loud. I mean, if you're in a quiet room, you can hear the tablet just fine. But if you're in a noisy place, well, it's very difficult to hear. But again, you could plug in some headphones or connect um, some headphones over Bluetooth and you can um, listen that way. But the speakers aren't that loud. Moving on to the 11.6 inches display. So we have a resolution of 1080p and the screen is better than I was expecting. So you can actually see the screen no matter how you look at it. So the viewing angles are really, really good on it. And it gets bright enough so you can see it in most places. Now, keep in mind that if you take this outside, there is a lot of reflection happening on the screen. So it's going to be a bit difficult to see outside. But the screen does seem to get bright enough so you can use it in most places. The touchscreen sensitivity, even though it's not as good as you'd find on a smartphone, it's good enough for typing or uh, playing games or anything like that. So much better than other tablets that I've tried in the past. And we are moving on to performance. So I've done a few benchmark tests because I was curious to see what scores I would get on this one compared to other devices that have the Intel N3450. So the scores that I got on Cinebench were about 10-15% lower than the scores that I got for other devices using the Intel N3450. Moving on to Passmark, once again the score was a bit lower than other devices with the Intel N3450. And lastly on the Geekbench 4, um, the same story, the score was a bit lower. Now I noticed that if you use uh, the tablet and you do those uh, benchmark tests uh, right when you start up the tablet, so if the tablet has been sitting for a while and it's cold, the scores are actually higher. So it has to do the heating inside the tablet because the tablet does get quite hot uh, mostly whenever you're doing those benchmark tests. As for the internal storage out of that 64 gigs that um, comes with this device, we have about 35, 37 gigs um, left and the speeds that I got for the internal storage are somewhat better than other mini PCs that I tried in the past, however not that exceptional. Comparing this with other mini PCs that use the same processor, so the Intel N3450, this is somewhat slower and you're mostly going to notice that when you're opening new apps. So if you open Chrome, if you open the Windows Store or anything like that, it's a bit slower than your regular mini PC that has the Intel N3450. 
If you watch YouTube videos and you use Microsoft Edge, you can select a maximum resolution of 4K. However, the screen's resolution is only 1080p. Now, the Wi-Fi is not fast enough so you can actually watch a 4K video without buffering. So the tablet is going to stop every 30 seconds to buffer. So the best resolution to watch videos is 1080p and at that resolution they do work very, very well. You can also play games on this tablet and the tablet has a built-in uh, accelerometer and that means that you can just turn the tablet left or right to control a car or anything like that. And in this case I played the Asphalt 8 and as you can probably see it does work okay but don't expect that uh, this is gonna do good for um, like high graphics intensive games. There is also a built-in microphone and that means that you can use the voice assistant and that one works good but you have to be pretty close to the tablet um, for it to pick up um, whatever you're saying. And we also have a 2 megapixel front facing camera. The quality is not the best but it should be okay for like Skype calls or anything like that. And since this is so big it's definitely gonna be awesome to watch movies on it. Now I tried a few video files and all of them did um, fairly good and I was quite surprised to see that the 4K file at 60 frames per second, this is the same file that I keep um, trying over and over on um, all the devices, that one worked very very well. So most video files are gonna do just fine on this tablet. The battery life is not bad, for me personally I had to charge it every second day, but it really depends how you use your tablet, how you keep your screen's brightness, what you do with it, if you keep the Bluetooth on, if you keep the Wi-Fi on all the time, uh, if you play games and so on, so it really depends from person to person. But you should be able to get 2-3 to three days easily from that 9000 milliamp battery that we have inside. And it's time to conclude this video. So first things first, I love the screen. I love how big it is, I love how bright it is, and it just looks good, and everything that you do on the screen looks awesome. Now, the not so good uh, about the tablet is the fact that we cannot use any of those um, USB ports to charge the tablet. So every time you want to charge the tablet, you need to use that power adapter, and that just sucks because you can't charge it in the car, you can't charge it on the go, and so on. So that's definitely a disadvantage. The speakers aren't the best, but again, you're gonna probably use like headphones and that's not gonna be a big issue. And the tablet, it's not the fastest out there and it gets kind of hot. And I'm imagining that that's um, why it slows down because it gets hot. So for 200 bucks, I think it's worth it. But if you have more money and you can get something better, definitely go for it. Alright guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did like it, press that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.